OK, here you can see the parts taken out of the small packages. On the left top side you can see the main circuit board with two small boards. The two small boards are adapter boards. They are used for the coils that determine the receiver frequency because this kit can receive on short wave and medium wave depending on which coil you put in. Below that we see some standard one quarter watt resistors. Uh, the lower ones, the three ones that have just one ring seem to be wire bridges with zero ohms and there are two big resistors. I'm guessing they are used to drop the voltage for the tube filaments but I'm not sure since I haven't yet checked the manual. Ok, the two parts, the black parts, the small ones with the two wires are varactor diodes, variable capacitor diode. Left to it is the audio amplifier chip and right to it are two, are two other standard diodes. I guess one is a Sina diode and one is a wrong polarity protection diode. I'm not sure, I haven't checked it. I'm just guessing. Next to that we have some ceramic disc capacitors, the yellow and blue ones, some electrolytics, the round ones. And on top, next to the circuit board, some screws for later mounting the circuit board so it can stand on a table. On the right side we have some potentiometers. One is the volume control, one is the regeneration control and one is the tuning control for tuning on stations. Below that we have some adapters and some other stuff. Like you can see, we have some coils, the green parts and the main tubes next to their sockets. These are all parts that were inside the small packages of this kit. Now I finished the solder job on the circuit board. There was no problem soldering the parts in. They can be soldered in excellent, really excellent, very well. The only problem, if you want to call it like that, is a comfort problem or comfort problem because, uh, for example, on these capacitors, some of them, you don't have enough space. So the capacitor is very tiny and the part, the connectors are very far away. So you have to bend the wire, as you can see here, for example, so that it fits. It's not really a problem that would stop the circuit from working. It's rather a comfort problem, if you want to call it like that. On these circuit boards, it was a little bit confusing because somewhere they wrote something about a torrid core being somewhere. There was no torrid core, but reading the manual told me that the torrid core is like an additional part. So if you buy the deluxe version or the, the additional kit for shortwave, and this one's probably for medium wave, I haven't tested it yet, obviously. And yeah, so the soldering the board so far was no problem. It took me far more than one hour, uh, but as you can see here on these resistors, even the rings, the golden rings, are like in the same line. Because if you build one of these, you are not really building it because you want to build a radio, you rather want to build it because of building it. And so you take your time and solder in resistors, all the, wire, all the color codes are showing in the same directions, on the capacitors the numbers are showing in the same direction. You just want to build it good, if you want to build one of these. Ok, that's about the circuit board. So now I have the tube put inside. It's already in, but it's not in. I will show you how to put it in. So this is the tube already stuck inside the socket, but I could easily remove it. Just look what I'm doing. Now the tube has been installed into the socket. You may eventually bend it a little bit over so it's very straight. And now we go ahead and put in the other tube. So this is a short review of the kit. I've built it obviously so it's completed. And from what it looks like, I'm really impressed with it. I would give it a B plus school mark. It's nearly the best mark that you can get. But I'm not giving it the best mark because it is definitely a good kit. But um, I have a guess that these tubes are not really glowing when it's put on. 
so you cannot see the filament glowing. I'm not sure, I haven't tested it, but I'm guessing. And this is something that I want to have on a tube kit. I want to see that the filament is glowing because this is why you buy a vacuum tube kit, uh, in my opinion. Uh, everything else is really good. The manual is very well explaining things. It gives you a short information about the historical side of this uh, radio receiver. Uh, they, they have made diagrams of coils, how it works. They give you tips how to solder in the parts, search mistakes if you build something wrong. I even read that they are offering a warranty. So if you do not want this kit and you haven't yet soldered it, you can put it back and get your money back. So this is definitely not bad. Also there is a parts list and someone has handwritten the numbers behind the parts as if someone has counted the parts and ensured that all parts are inside the kit that you need to build and there was also not any part missing. There is one resistor R14 which is not used and there is also no R10 on the board but in the manual they write that these components are not supposed to be mounted or do not exist so there's nothing wrong there. Okay, so I cannot yet say how sensitive this device is going to be. This will be in the next part of the video. I'm going to make an on-air test, connect it to an antenna and do a test of it. But as far as it's looking right now, I'm really, really liking this. The circuit board takes on the solder very well. Explanations how to build it are very good. And hey, I mean, it's a tube slash hybrid kit. So you have the tubes for the radio circuit and also the uh, design seems to be very nice because what I have read, I have not really read them and I've just looked over it and seen, okay, are they describing this? Are they describing that? What would need to be into a radio kit? And it seems like that they're using one tube as RF preamplifier and the other tube as actual receiver. So it should have a really good sensitivity. Okay, so let me hook up a power supply to it and the speaker and antenna and earth connection and then we will see how well this one performs. Once again if you want a tube kit as far as from the building side as far as it goes it goes now I'll definitely recommend that one to you because also it has these screws and it's standing on top and you can very well get to the, get to the controls and they also give you some knobs so you can do some fine alignment or fine adjustment so nothing wrong there. The only thing why I didn't get the best mark is because I'm guessing at this point. When I plug it in, it will work, but I won't see the filament from the tubes glowing because usually my experience with tubes is this, this one, these ones seem to have a very low power consumption for the filament and so you can't really see it glowing, but on, a, on another tube where you can see the filament glowing, it takes a lot of current only for the heater. And I probably could have also done it with other tubes, but then your batteries would like go for one, maybe two hours and then it would be empty. And with these tubes, they will last maybe four or five, six hours. I don't know. Okay, so now let's check the next video for, a actual, for an actual test of this kit on an antenna. And I have a big speaker here because there is this special plug here, headphone-like plug for speaker. And I do have one speaker that will fit here. It's a very big speaker, so we get a good uh, feeling how good this device is going to sound. And I will use the big speaker and connect it and then we'll see. Okay, so far from that. So now let's do a band scan with the receiver. It's powered by a 12 volt power supply, which is stabilized 12 volts. Here I have a four meter long antenna and a ground connection, which has been connected. The volume has been set to middle. On the output, there is this speaker connected. I tried another speaker, but it didn't work because both channels are bridged and if you put in a mono connector it will make a short circuit and this chip will get hot. So I found that problem and I changed it. And now let's do a band scan.
Okay, that was it. So this is the review about the kit, the final review. And the mark is getting a little bit worse. I made it a B plus and now I'm going from a B plus to a B minus. And this is because um, the kit is not so as sensitive as it should be. First I made mistakes. You'd see that this circuit board had changed and also I have added these wire bridges that you can see here. I forgot them and I changed the potentiometers from upside to down because it was when I was turning to silent it got louder and when I was turning to louder it got silent. I got them in the wrong way. Uh, so what bothers me is the sensitivity because they have put in really lots of effort in this design. You have a low pass filter here that should stabilize the regenerative receiver which is this tube and you have the RF preamp which is this tube. So they have two tuned circuits they have one tuned circuit here and one tuned circuit here. And for what it is, it should just perform better. I mean, if I would just clip on an alligator clip here, which is like one feet, a little bit more than one feet, let's say one and a half feet long, uh, you should already pick up stations, but I was connecting a four meter long wire or around 12 feet or so, I haven't measured it. Uh, and the problem was that, right, it's 13 feet, I don't know, somewhere in that range. The problem was that I could indeed pick up stations but it's winter and it's at the night and in winter and at the night you should pick up lots of stations and not just a few ones. Well there were some stations if you work with the regeneration you probably would get them in but it's just for what it is the audio quality is okay it's sounding very good uh, if you got a station got uh, tuned in very good but the problem is that it's just not as sensitive as it should be. Still, I recommend it for you if you want to build a tube-based radio or a tube radio. This is the kit you want to get. Uh, after fixing the mistakes, reading the schematic where they write even in red color, it's, it's important, add these bridges on the coils. Because first when it was working, I couldn't tune in any station. So I could tune, but it didn't do anything. And this is because the bridges were missing on the boards. But as you fix it, it will work. So, yeah, not much else to say about this kit. Uh, I don't know the price about it because it was a present for me and obviously now it's working. Just just saw a band scan but once again for what it is I mean the amount of effort they put into it it just should perform a little bit better. Okay so buy it if you want to have a short or if you want to have a kit that can be built in a short time with tubes and you have a tube radio with hybrid with a uh, with an integrated circuit amplifier, uh, but yeah, I'm okay with it. I don't say it's bad, I don't say it's the best, it's good but not the best. Okay, this is about the kit that I got, and best regards, Stefan.